I welcome you to worship this morning. We're glad that you're here on this big and exciting day as it is Halloween. We're also recognizing all of our saints who passed away this year, so we're grateful that you could be present with us. I have a few brief announcements before we get started. Today is the fifth Sunday of the month, and we are expecting a fifth Sunday praise video to be published on Facebook today. Cross our fingers that it works, as technology sometimes does and does not. But members throughout our community, we got together this week and last week to pre-record something so that we have a fifth Sunday celebration with the Ministers Association. So uh, stay posted to our Facebook page for that today or this week. As a reminder, we are having session tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Cross our fingers, I will have your packet done for you today. So uh, keep an eye out for that in your email. Also this week, Presbyterian Women will be meeting on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, the topic this er, for that Caitlin and I will be hosting um, will be end of life planning with um, some of the folks from Stark's Newell Funeral Home. We come in and talk to us about how to prepare for becoming a saint um, and what that may mean for you and your family. So join us Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Also, in two weeks, so November 14th is our congregational meeting it's where we'll pass our budget and figure out the work of the church for 2022. But after that meeting, we get to have a potluck. So if you would like to join us for that meeting for um, the potluck, please stay. Joel is making ham, so bring a dish to pass, dessert, sides, anything that you'd like, we would welcome. And we'll have takeout and to-go containers for those of you who would like to eat your meal at home, or if you'd like it delivered, those of you who can't make us, let us know in the comments today on our Facebook page, and we'll make sure that you get a meal. Also, today is the last day, I'm going to put some air quotes around last day, to submit your pledge cards. So if you haven't already um, submitted your pledge card, I encourage you to do so today so that when we meet tomorrow for a session, we have a better idea of what to expect for the upcoming year. So if you don't have one with you, there are some available in the back. Is that correct, as you're getting up and getting one? Awesome. All right, I think that is all the announcements that I have. I also received a letter this week from Barb Fleek. Um, she's down in Zephyr Hills, Florida. Um, and she sent us a note letting us know how she's doing. Um, she said that summer in Florida was hot, <laughs> but sometimes the Florida temperature matched that which was in Michigan. So the snowbirds are slowly returning and she's excited about seeing old friends once more as they head south. So she sends her best wishes and um, let us know that she's doing well and she's, you know, having a great time in Florida. So I'm sure some of you may go down and visit her soon. Uh, but we're grateful for that communication and to know that she's doing well and enjoying her retirement down south. Are there other joys, concerns, or announcements to be shared today? Seeing none, let us go ahead and turn our hearts to God who is calling us into this time, into this space, calling us to come home.
please join me in the call to worship. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unmask and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to seek. Open my eyes to the
No person is an island entire of itself. Each is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. With Thanksgiving, we remember Nellie Bleak, January 2nd, 2021. Stephen McIntyre, February 17th, 2021. Nora Smith, March 1st, 2021. Diane Osmick, April 5th, 2021. Marion Smith, April 25th, 2021. Sharon Shank, October 15th, 2021. And those others that are very close to us that we remember. Each person's death diminishes me, for I am involved in humankind. Therefore, ask not for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for you. <laughs> death, be not proud, some have called you mighty and dreadful, yet you are not so. For those whom you think you can overthrow, do not through poor death, nor yet can you kill me. One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, you will die. Join me in a prayer, please. Our Heavenly Father, Bless those honored ones as they sit beside you in heaven. Comfort their loved ones as they cherish the many memories you have given them. In this we pray. Amen. Our special music today is a song that Linda found, and its words are on the back 
of the honoring of the saints so that you can follow along in your hearts with the words. I'm not going to ask you to sing along. <laughs> but um, as this moment to reflect on all of those who we have lost and loved, um, let us take this moment to hear from God through this beautiful song. Join me, please, in the prayer of illumination. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth, thou sendest clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything lost will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my ears. Illumine me, Spirit divine. The scripture lesson this morning is from the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 1 through 14. <clears throat> now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, 
she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees in the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is it that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you among all the animals, and among all wild creatures, and upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. Amen. From the front of the book to the back of the book, I will be reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 through 6. Let us continue to listen for God's word. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God will be with them. God will wipe every tear from their eyes and death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who is seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'd now like to invite the children to come forward. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, you got the max? No. So you think I'll be able to figure it out to you? No. <laughs> so do you like wearing the mask? It's not comfortable. It's not comfortable. I get it. Uh, but it's sometimes it's fun. Halloween's fun because we get to pretend to be someone else, right? It gets nice to be in a costume and go around and as a creepy skeleton guy, you can go wherever you want. <laughs> as a creepy skeleton guy, are you going to try to scare people? Chase, are you going to try to scare uh -huh. people? Uh -huh. <laughs> It's a GoPro, it's the most durable camera. <laughs> I love it. So, you want to sit with me? Alright, cool. So, when we wear masks, we get to pretend to be someone else, right? In the movies, when you see bad guys doing stuff, sometimes they cover their mask, or they cover their face with a mask, right? Why is that? Because we don't know it's them. <clears throat> so on but Halloween. But how do they get cold? How do you get cold? How do they get cold? How do they get caught, maybe? I love it. <laughs> Alright. The so when we wear masks, Mommy, we don't know who that person is. Uh, <clears throat> you don't go to get cold. You don't know to get cold? You don't know to get cold. I don't know. Uh, <coughs> masks. So when we wear masks, we get to hide. And sometimes it's fun to like maybe play jokes on people. But also in the scripture that we just read. But I want to get In the scripture we just read, I don't mean hit I want to because you did something without wrong. Without mask. Have you ever hit because you did something wrong? No. Of course not. Jace would never do anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. But that is part of... <laughs> Part of what the story is, is that they hid. Not only did they do a bad thing, but they hid. And we're going to talk about why the hiding is often worse than doing the bad thing. Right? So if you broke something, if we, and then you hid that thing, you break right, that's worse than actually breaking the thing. It's hiding the thing. Hiding the thing? And 
we still do them. We're supposed to love our neighbors as ourselves, help the widows and orphans. We're told not to kill or steal or lie, and yet they still exist in the world. We should obey God's commands. It kind of goes without saying. But disobeying God is not the largest part of this passage. Our understanding of sin is that which separates us from God. God never pulls away from us, but our sin pulls us away from God. When Adam and Eve ate from the tree, they sinned. But that is not the only sin that they commit in this passage. Our lesson today, as it picks up in verse 8, God is walking through the garden after Adam and Eve had eaten from the tree that they were told not to eat from. They hid themselves. It's not... It's not eating from the tree, but it's their response to their wrongdoing that separates them from God. When we disobey God, we misalign ourselves with God and God's will. But that is often a small portion. The greater sin is that we hide from God. In this instance, Adam and Eve physically hide themselves from God, as if that were actually possible. But we're all guilty of doing this in one way or another. But what's worse, is how they continue to dig themselves a deeper hole. 